In recent developments, Israeli forces have successfully established control over a buffer zone along the Gaza Strip's border with Egypt, as stated by the Israeli military. This move grants Israel effective control over the entire land border of the Palestinian territory, despite an order from the International Court of Justice to cease attacks on Rafah, Israeli operations in southern Gaza have persisted, where a significant portion of Gaza's population had sought refuge. But before we continue if you're enjoying this briefing please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. During a televised briefing, military spokesperson Daniel Hagari announced that Israeli forces had achieved operational control over the Philadelphia Corridor, a critical 14 kilometers long passage along Gaza's border with Egypt. This corridor was identified as a crucial smuggling route for Hamas, which governs Gaza. While Hagari did not specify the details of operational control, an earlier statement from an Israeli military official confirmed the presence of Israeli forces on the ground in parts of this corridor. Prior to this, the Gaza Strip's southern border with Egypt was the only land border not directly controlled by Israel. On Wednesday, Israeli tanks carried out raids into Rafah, penetrating the city for the first time despite the World Court's directive to halt the assault. The World Court criticized Israel for failing to provide a plan for the safety and provision of essentials to evacuees from Rafah. Additionally, the court called on Hamas to release hostages taken during an attack on Israel on October 7. Rafah residents reported that Israeli tanks had advanced into Tel al-Sultan in the west and Yibna and near Shabora in the center before retreating to a buffer zone along the Egyptian border. These maneuvers were distinct from previous offensives where Israeli forces had maintained their positions. Distress calls from Tel al-Sultan indicated that drones had targeted displaced individuals moving towards designated safe areas, according to Haytham al-Hams, Deputy Director of Ambulance and Emergency Services in Rafah. Palestinian health officials reported 19 civilian casualties due to Israeli airstrikes and shelling across Gaza. Israel has accused Hamas of using civilians as human shields, an allegation that Hamas denies. Health Minister Maj Abu Rahman appealed to Washington to pressure Israel into opening the Rafah crossing for humanitarian aid, highlighting the dire situation for patients in Gaza due to a lack of medical treatment, suggesting that Israel is not prepared to cease its operations as demanded by Hamas. Hanegbi emphasized that the ongoing conflict in Rafah aims to dismantle Hamas' control over Gaza and prevent future attacks on Israel by Hamas and its allies. In the ongoing conflict, Israeli armored personnel carriers were active near the Gaza border, with the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urging Israel to formulate a post-war strategy for Gaza to prevent chaos and a resurgence of Hamas. The U.S. reiterated its opposition to a major ground offensive in Rafah, although it did not believe such an operation was currently underway. The health ministry in Gaza reported over 36,000 Palestinian fatalities since Israel launched its offensive following the Hamas-led attack on October 7, which resulted in around 1,200 Israeli deaths and over 250 hostages taken. There have been no new developments regarding ceasefire and hostage release negotiations. Hamas maintains that discussions are fugal unless Israel ends its offensive in Rafah. Hamas and its ally Islamic Jihad claim to have successfully targeted Israeli forces in Rafah with anti-tank rockets, mortar bombs, and explosive devices, leading to Israeli casualties. The Israeli military reported three soldiers killed and three severely injured. An explosive device detonated in a Rafah building was also reported by public broadcaster Can Radio. Palestinian health officials documented several injuries from Israeli fire and the destruction of aid supplies in eastern Rafah due to Israeli bombardment. Residents in Rafah noted significant destruction of homes in areas designated for evacuation by Israel. Approximately a million Palestinians have fled Rafah following Israeli evacuation orders, as reported by the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA. The Palestine Red Crescent Society, PRCS, evacuated its medical teams from a field hospital in the Al Mawazi area due to ongoing bombardments, with two staff members killed in an ambulance strike. In a separate incident in Gaza City, an Israeli airstrike on a house resulted in five Palestinian deaths. In Khan Yunis, another airstrike killed three people, including a former senior Hamas police officer, and a subsequent strike killed four more, including two children. In northern Gaza, Israeli forces shelled neighborhoods in Gaza City and advanced further into Jabalia, causing extensive damage to residential districts. The humanitarian situation in Gaza continues to deteriorate, with widespread malnutrition reported as aid deliveries have significantly decreased. The UN has warned of potential famine, noting a two-thirds reduction in humanitarian aid entering the enclave since the beginning of Israel's assault on Rafah. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.